All right, so what we want to do, start by pressing on on your calculator, click new, say no to saving, let's add the graph. We want to graph the first one. This one is x squared minus 12x plus 35. Make sure you entered it incorrectly. Just verify that it's right there. It's going to look like this. We're asked to find the coordinates of the vertex. So we can see the vertex here, but we can't see the y-intercept. We need to make that one go taller, the y-axis. Double click here on the where it says 6.67. Let's type in something bigger. We'll try 50. Now I can see the y-intercept and I can see the vertex. So this is a better drawn graph. I can use the menu, analyze graph, find the minimum. It asks me for the lower bound, so I go to the left of where it occurs and click. That then asks me for the upper bound, if I get the click right. Am I getting my click? Nope. Click there. Upper bound, I scroll across, click. So now I can see that the minimum is at 6, minus 1. To find the y-intercept, the best routine is to use a trace, trace graph. It occurs when x equals 0. So type in 0, and it says x equals 0. You see that appear. Then press enter twice, and it will record that point. So we can see here in this, the vertex should always be in a bracket. 0, comma, uh, 0, 35. That's not right. Ah, right, yeah, 6. That's right. So the, vert the vertex is at 6, comma, minus 1. This is the vertex. The y-intercept is 35. So there's the first one done for you. Have a go at the next three for yourself. Let me pause the video. Okay, so what we're looking at now is we want to use our calculator to find the domain and range of a function in stand, uh, quadratic function in standard form. So for this first one, we need to start by uh, graphing it. So let me get out of that, escape a few times, I'm over here. I want to move up, let's delete that one. I want to start by graphing it. I've got x squared minus 8x plus 14, press enter. I see the function clearly here. Um, in order to decide what the domain and ranges is. Now, a quadratic function is going to continue outwards in all directions, and it's just going to keep going and going. So the domain, so the domain for a quadratic function is always going to be all possible values of x. So here we say that x is a member of a set of real numbers. We could say it like that, or we could say x can have any value. There's no limits on the domain of a quadratic function. There's no oh, limits. Yeah. So when you do the IXL, if it says domain, you're going to, you're going to like every time it asks you for the domain. That's that one. That's that one. That's that one. It asks you again and again the same thing. But for the range, it's a little bit harder. So the range we have to decide, it comes from the vertex. We see for this function that the vertex is at 4, negative 2. But this one, you have to look at this vertex and see, is it a minimum or a maximum? So because this one is a minimum, the range is going to start at negative 2 and everything above. If it was a maximum, it would start at negative 2 and everything below. But on this graph, there is nothing, there is nothing down here. There's no graph down here. Whereas it keeps going up and up in this direction. So on this graph, we say that the range is going to be greater than or equal to negative 2. So range y is greater than or equal to negative 2. Have a go with the calculator now and do the other three. Okay, here we go. All right. So parabola has a vertex 0, 1, passes through the point minus 6, minus 8. 
write the equation in vertex form. So in vertex form, we've got y is equal to a bracket x minus h squared plus k. So we're given the vertex here, so we're given h and k. What is the value of h? Zero. What is the value of k? One. One. So inserting that, we get y is equal to a bracket x minus h, which is zero, plus k, which is one. You can simplify that. That's y is equal to ax squared plus one. x minus zero is just x. x squared is just x squared. Times it by a, we get this. So now we can put in the minus 6 and the 8. Which is the y value? Which is the y? Negative 8. So we get negative 8 is equal to a bracket negative 6 squared plus 1. Here at this point, you can open it up. If we open this up, we will get 36a plus 1 is equal to minus 8. We can subtract 1 from both sides, and we'll get minus 9 is equal to 36a. And we can divide by 36. So a is equal to minus 9 divided by 36, which is minus 4. At this point, at this point here, so if you don't have a calculator, you can solve it like this one. At this point, you can go to n solve. So I could n solve that one. I can go menu, algebra, n solve. Negative a is equal to a times, put in the times when you're working with n solve instead of just going straight to the bracket and it will improve the chances of success. Minus six, close bracket squared, plus one. Um, I've got my squared missing. Minus six, squared, minus 6, uh, sorry, my typing's gone badly wrong, a times bracket negative 6, close bracket squared, okay, there we go, plus 1, comma, solve for the letter a, and it will give us here um, minus a quarter, oops, So we get our answer there. All right. Have a go now at the next two questions yourself. Okay, let's have a look at this one. So we've got a quadratic function with vertex minus 3, 5. Let's start with that. Y is equal to A bracket X plus 3 squared plus 5. The x coordinate of the vertex is minus 3. That means h is minus 3. So x minus h is x plus 3. We now insert the point p. We've got the y value of 13. And we've got the x value of minus 1. If we simplify that, we get 13 equals a bracket 2 squared plus 5. This gives us 13 is equal to 4a plus 5. 2 squared is 4. So take away 5 from both sides. We get 8 is equal to 4a. Divide by 4, we get 8 is equal to 8 over 4, which is 2. So in vertex form, it would be 2 bracket x plus 3 squared plus 5. So now we need to convert to standard form. We need to convert to standard form. So that means we have to expand the bracket. So we've got leave the 2 and expand this using FOIL. If we expand it using FOIL, you're going to get 6 plus 9 like this plus 5. So we either use the quadratic expansion for a plus b squared which would be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, as I did, or write it as x plus 3 times x plus 3 and use FOIL. You'll get this. Now we need to bring the 2 in. So this is going to give 2 times x squared, 2 times 6x, 2 times 9 plus 5. And then 18 plus 5, 2x squared 
plus 12x, and that is plus 23. And this is our final answer. All right, that's it for today. Have a go with the IXLs.